This is Kelly Wentworth from Survivor San Juan del Sur, and you're about to listen to one of my favorite sources for all things Survivor. This is Survivor Talk with D&D. So find your flint, grab a bag of rice, and all your fishing gear, and let the bartering begin. Take it away, D&D. Thanks, Kelly. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm Dwayne. And I'm David. And we're just two best friends talking about the show we love, Survivor. And tonight is our, oh, what did we call it? That's what you think episode, talking about the cast. And we're going to get what our listeners think. So our agenda tonight, we're going to get your thoughts on Season 30, or at least people from outside of the United States of America. A very international flavor tonight to our podcast. Yes. Nobody in the U.S. wants to write in. But we've got some Icelanders and some Brazilians. So there, so there you go. We're going to give you our D&D Fantasy Game Season 30 point system. So if you're getting your Survivor team ready for the, Survivor, the D&D Survivor Fantasy Game, you can kind of have an idea of what points we're going to be giving. Because remember, it's not particularly who does the best in the season. It's who's going to get you points based on this point system, much like fantasy football. All right, so we will have that, and then we will also post it on our website later on in the week. And then we will also be introducing our newest blogger, Alex Gomery Keisler. We will introduce him in just a little bit. All right, this is our third podcast, our third preseason podcast for season 30, our third one. We have over five hours of podcasting already on season 30 because we did our D&D Take a First Look in which David and I literally read the bios on the air and reacted to them. That's a great episode. But an even better episode, would you agree, David? Even better. Is our second episode, the DD&K Take a Closer Look. And that was with the beautiful Kelly Wentworth. It's better to look at and listen to, yes. (laughs) Really? (laughs) We don't want to scare her off, David. (laughs) Anyway, that's a great episode. That is two hours and 40 minutes of pure fun. I went back and listened to that episode, and I I literally laughed so many times while I was watching that, while I was listening to it again. So uh, be sure to go on iTunes, subscribe I, to us. I don't know if you've been following our chat today, because I know you were busy. Oh, I've been swamped. So, but she and I were talking with your with your picture beside it, so you'll read it eventually. But I'm, she's talking to her about coming back for the last podcast just to make pics with us. Because oh. the rest of Gordon's interviews will be out, or right. will be close to being out. There still might be a few before the premiere, right. but she wants to come back and do her picks. Well, yeah, our actual picks. Our preseason I, don't mean anything. Picks. I guess if she wants to come back, I guess we'll let her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. After tonight's episode, we have two more preseason shows, and then we'll start our in-season schedule. All right. Thursday, next Thursday night, February 12th, is our preseason roundtable. My friends, this is going to be amazing. We're going to have Andy Baker, of course, writer of The Baker's Dozen. We are going to have Steve Helling, of course, our our friend from People Magazine. Pretty cool to be able to say that, isn't it, David? Mm-hmm. Yep. And then we're going to have, for the first time ever, the one who was on the island and got to speak to them, the one whose articles we are all reading and enjoying, Gordon Holmes. How awesome is that going to be a week from tonight, Thursday, February 12th? We will be live with those three. It's going to be wonderful. And then the last Thursday, February 19th, the D&D Fantasy Cast. That is a lot cleaner than it sounds. David and I are going to make all of our – well, we're, we're going to draft for our D&D Fantasy Game team. Mm-hmm. And then I think Kelly's going to be with us to mock us as we make our picks. Yes. And then she is also going to make um, like winner picks and stuff like that. So that's going to be a lot of fun. While we're on the air tonight, if you are watching us live, you can chat in the chat window. And you can watch us anytime we're on the show live. We record 10 o'clock Eastern time on Thursday nights at stwdd.com slash live. If you're watching or listening live and you want to tweet anything, Hashtag STWDD. It'll pop up in my window right over here, and I will maybe even put it on the screen for you all to see. All right. Before we introduce Alex, Alex is waiting patiently, aren't you, Alex? Yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while. <laughs> that was every a once in a while. Bothered, yeah. <laughs> hey. 
<laughs> Every once in a while, I uh, hear a mouse click and his face pops up on my screen. But he's waiting. So I don't know. He's probably playing a game or something, trivia quiz or trivia crack while we're waiting. But anyway, uh, if you'd like, you can nominate us for the 10th Annual Podcast Awards for Best Entertainment. You can. There's a link on our website over on the left. We do want to thank you for starting your Amazon shopping using our links. That's very helpful. Okay, And then uh, if you've been thinking to yourself, wow, these D&D guys sure make me laugh and enjoy myself every week, as much as a trip to Starbucks, then would you please consider becoming a monthly patron? For as little as a dollar, five dollars, ten, fifteen, a hundred dollars a month. Okay, two to five dollars a month. You can become a monthly patron and help support us. My friends, it is time to introduce our new blogger. We're going to add him to the mix. We already have Shayna, the infamous, beautiful Shayna. Alex, I'm sorry, you are not as pretty as Shayna. So I'm I'm sorry about that, Alex. But we would like to introduce everyone to our newest blogger. He wrote all last season. I don't even know how many seasons he's been writing. But, dude, when this guy gets a blog post up, Twitter knows about it, let me tell you. His name is Alec Gomery Keisler. Say hello to everybody, Alex. Hey, how are you? I'm doing fine. <laughs> so am I pronouncing your name correctly? It's Gomery. Gomery. So it's not... Shazam, Shazam, Shazam! No. You, you don't even know who that is, do you? You don't even know who that is, do you? Sorry, I don't. He doesn't. <laughs> David, we are so old. It's Gomer Pyle. Um, I don't know who that is either. Shazam, Shazam, Shazam! All right, it's Alex Gomery Keisler. Yeah, that's it. Is it just me, Alex, or does Keisler sound like a really high end stock group? The Keisler ah. Group. Yeah, it, it does. I, I totally hear that. It, yeah. it really does sound like some sort of business thing. It, it, it really does. You, you should really, you know. It's open. It has a future business connotation. Yeah. yeah if yeah. the last name isn't a, enough of a reason to start a business with that name, I don't see any other reason not to do that. <laughs> That's right. So, Alex, I got to tell you, man, I love the title, not just the title of this week's blog, which we'll get to in a second, but the overall title of your blog is The Players and Their Games. Thanks. I love that title. Now, tell us, tell us how you came to that title and how that's going to, um, you know, fill out in the blog itself. Well, the reason I chose that title is that, like, the theme of my blog is just breaking down the game into the individual players and how they're playing the game. Like, I got like a bullet point for each person discussing what they're doing right, what they're doing wrong, you know, whether they've got whether they're they're on the course to win or not. So like I'm breaking it my art my blog down into the players and their games. So that's what gave me the idea for the name. You know, last season I had a much lamer name for my blog. I just called it, you know, player analysis because I was analyzing individual players. So I think the players and their games sounds a lot cooler. Oh, I absolutely agree. How about you, David? Well absolutely. And now that you're on this international website, you you you're stepping up your game and putting a great title on there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we are thankful for you coming on our site. I hope it helps you get even more exposure. And, Thanks, uh, no. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Until he gets another call. But, hey, we're going to enjoy you while we got you. <laughs> I don't think I'll be leaving anytime soon. I don't think so. So I'm looking forward to your blog all season. So you're going to write once a week, is that right? Yeah, once a week. Um, and. I, I haven't had a prop. I haven't since I started. I haven't had like one week where I haven't been able to get it up. Um, so I don't think that'll be a problem. I'm always able to meet the deadline. All right. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking about. Something. <laughs> All right. Hey, um, before we get before we get David, to your blog, stop though, doing that. Before we get to your blog, um, you've been watching since the beginning of Survivor. Seen every season. Um. No, I, I was only like four years old when the first season came out, so I wasn't really old enough to. Okay, understand. Yeah, so I I started. It, it used to be that um, my dad and my sister and my mom would all watch the show together. I would just come in and watch the challenges when I was younger. But then, like in season eleven, that was Guatemala. I came in to watch one of the challenges in the final episode, and then I, for some reason, I just stayed a little longer and thought to myself, "Hey, hell's, hey, this is actually kind of cool." So I finished the rest of the finale with them, and then we just started watching it as a family, starting at season twelve onward. Now, do so, you have Do you have a favorite season? Uh, favorite season. That'd have to be Kageon, you know, just, it was just stacked with so many great players and great characters, you know, Tony, Tasha, Spencer, Cass, LJ, just so many really great players and characters, like, it was just the most incredible season I'd ever seen. Yeah. Least favorite season? 
Ooh, least favorite season, no question. Redemption Island. The way half the cast just laid down and died and let Boss Knob just waltz all over them was, you know, disgusting. Like, I just could not get over all the passivity and predictability. That season was just a complete disgrace in every sense of the word. And it also, you know, gave us the worst twist of all time, Redemption Island. Man, I mean, this I is think, why he's on our page. Yes, thank you. Know, you. I just think part of the beauty of the game is that there is no second chances. It's a harsh beauty, but it's what makes the game so tough and pure. You know, just it's not when you get voted off, you're stuck in this limbo where you can just bypass the whole social game by winning these carnival games. That just doesn't seem like Survivor to me. I agree with you. You know what else I didn't like about Redemption Island, Alex? And if you've ever listened to our podcast, you know this. So act like you know it already. <laughs> is what I, I hated that for season after season after season, they say fire represents your life in this game. Right? Yeah. Okay, I get I get voted off. They put my fire out, and yet I'm not out of the game yet. I, I know. Right? I I completely agree. And you know, there's a ton of other flaws with the format. You know, it, it sort of screws over a lot of people. Like when someone gets voted off, and then they just you know when the other tribe is present, they just point their finger at the people that voted them off and just expose everything just out of anger. It should be like yeah. when you vote someone off before the jury. You know, they're out and they're not back to haunt you, but. Now, right. if you have Redemption Island, people are going to be more cautious about making bold blindsides and you know fun moves because it's just going to come back to haunt them if the person returns to the game or if they just expose it at um, Redemption Island Arena. So the idea that you know it's going to inhibit some aggressive gameplay isn't really a good thing. Right. And, yeah. So I. But I, Probst I, likes it, so you know. Yeah. What we're are we going to do? Yeah. Uh, it's, favorite it's, player? It's, it's, do you have a favorite player of all time? Tony. Um, oh, Tony is just like the perfect combination player and character. You know, he's entertaining. He's sharp. You know, I've always enjoyed the devious backstabbing gameplay. And you know, while he does play a villainous game, he's never mean spirited about it. And I like that a lot. I yeah. like people who play a deceptive game but who aren't you know mean about it. Well, Tony yeah. was one of our favorites for many different reasons. We would be in the middle of podcasting after yeah. the show was over, and we would be getting texts during our podcast. <laughs> Are y'all kidding me? Is that really what you think? And we just have to ignore it. <laughs> but Tony was awesome. Tony was great. Tony was. Uh, Tony, Tony was. Tony was really good. TV. He didn't hold back anything. He right. said yeah. exactly what he, he was, felt. He threw it cast everything he wanted to throw at her, and he just yeah. made it fun. That's the social game you want to see. Yeah, yeah. I just wore his heart on his sleeve. He had that big booming personality that was just a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. You know, yeah, like the, I'm trying to remember who it was I said reminded me of Tony. Was it Kelly that I said Kelly, that about? Yeah, Kelly the state trooper. Kelly, man, she reminds me of Tony big time. Yeah, she said in her interview with Gordon Holmes that she would align with Tony if she could and that she liked the way he played. Right. Well, and she acts like him. She talks faster than anybody out there, just like Tony did, and she's already playing the game pregame. You know, she's yeah. already eyeing people thinking. She, I, I think she's going to be Tony-like. She, she talks yeah. like a podcaster who just had a monster drink. Yeah. So, Kelly yeah, is like Kelly is absolutely a favorite of mine. You know, she's just the full package. She knows the game. Yeah. She's really likable, athletic, and tough. I don't think she's gonna, you know, back down. I think that she's not gonna get intimidated by other people. Right. Um, yeah, and you know, it, it, and I, I the best part for her is, you know, oftentimes, you know, the forty something players on Survivor, you know, get targeted just because the young players often band together and the older people are perceived as liabilities. But if you look at the bios, she's actually on a tribe that's split down the middle with age. You got the younger half that's Rodney um, and Lindsay, Sierra, Sierra and Lindsay. They're all 24 to 27. And then Mike, Dan, and herself, they're all 38, 44, and 47. Right. Now, so I think that what we're going to see is the older half of the tribe seems a lot more level-headed and strategically savvy than the younger half. So I think that we're going to see some sort of elders alliance with them um, roping in one of the younger players, probably Sierra. So I think that Kelly's on a good spot at the start. I See, I would agree with you, except I think they would probably bring in Lindsay over Sierra. Mm. And only because Lindsay seems more mature, seems like she's maybe a more mature person than Sierra is. I, I kind of I saw that too in the beginning, but the more I keep reading about these people and the Gordon Home things come out, the yeah. more I'm kind of fluctuating. That's why I'm glad we're not picking for another two weeks because yeah, my really. life keeps changing. I'm starting to like Sierra a little bit more. She's tall. She's athletic. You know, yeah. she's, she could be good in challenges because when it's only six people, you kind of want to lean towards strength more so than, than not strength because you got to win the next challenge. You don't want to go back to tribal council. Yeah. Right. Sierra struck me as a little more athletic than um, Lindsay. So I think that – yeah. also I, my take on Lindsay is 
she is going to be perceived as an outsider early on. I think that, um, you know, as unfair as it is, conformity plays a big role in Survivor. I think a lot of stuff from the nose piercing to the tattoos, she's going to be perceived as the one who's different. It's not fair, it's not nice, but conformity plays a huge role in Survivor, and I can just picture Sierra fitting in a little better than I can picture Lindsay fitting in. Okay, I mean, I okay, I can see that, but I also see her... Okay, I, I think Rodney's going to be the sore thumb in the whole tribe. Oh, absolutely. And you know, so... Is it, is it, well, and so that that kind of helps Lindsay. It gives her a chance to bond with the others because of Rodney. And then she's a hairdresser, so she is used to talking to people of all areas of life, all ages, connecting with them. And so I think she has an advantage, especially with Rodney being on that tribe, of connecting with the others, even though she has the kind of outsider look. Well, I do agree with you that Rodney is going to be a sore thumb. His ego is going to be rubbing everyone the wrong day minutes in. But the, I, I'm a little hesitant to say he's going to be the first out because when you've got only a small six-person tribe, you really do have to focus on winning challenges because otherwise you're down to you know just two people in the blink of an eye. So I think that Rodney is strength. It'll be, it'll be enough to keep him around for the first tribal council, but I think after that point he's done, not just because you know he'll have no allies, but I think that... He's so you know ripped and muscular. He's going to be falling apart like Garrett. He's going to, this right. hunger is going to hit him in a way that it just won't hit the other players. It's the wiry and athletic ones like Ozzy who are built for Survivor, not the people like Rodney who just right. you, know, you can tell eat a diet with a lot of proteins. The hunger is going to just hit him really hard. But I think he's got maybe three days before the hunger really sets in. So I think he'll have three days of pulling his weight around camp and doing well yeah. in challenges before he starts to collapse. And I think that that might be the moment when Lindsay gets the boot. But well, if you're right, then you're then it's then Sierra and Lindsay, based on what you're saying, based on your theory, then Sierra and Lindsay are gonna have a battle over who's gonna fit in the best. That'll yeah, be fun to force. watch. Yeah, yeah, that'll be fun to watch. Yeah, because I don't see Rodney sticking with Sierra and Lindsay. If it comes down to a split, Rodney's gonna walk over to Mike or Kelly and say, Hey, you know, just tell me who to vote for. As long as it's not me, because if they get in the first challenge and Lindsay takes a lot longer than anybody else to get over a wall. Guess who's going to have a big target? No matter how social her game is, you know, if she's the one that's keeping them from catching up to the rest of the groups. Yeah. And if Rodney's got any smart to him, he's going to walk over to the older guys and say, "Hey, just tell me who to vote for, him. and we'll get rid of yeah. him. Win the next challenge." Yeah. Yeah. That it, that's what he should do. But my guess on my take on Rodney is I think he's going to try and impose his will on others. He really does seem, you know, arrogant enough to think that he's just destined to run it all. Yeah. And. Most seasons these days, there does seem to be usually, you know, one entitled alpha male who just believes he's destined to run his tribe, and then he's in for a very rude awakening. Yeah. The last season, it was Drew. You know, we've seen Brad Culpepper, um, Garrett, and I really think that Rodney fits that description really well this season. I'll, unless his tribe does really well in challenges, I'll be amazed if he's there at the merge. Well, since we're talking about some of the points that you make in your blog, why don't you go ahead and tell them the title of your first blog? Uh, all right, um, the title for my preseason article was Around the Worlds Apart Cast in 80 Paragraphs. Yay. That is so awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Now, David and I think it's awesome because we know the movie Around the World in 80 Days. Please uh -huh. tell me you know that movie. Actually, I don't. I just know the title. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, okay. At least he knows the title. Dwayne, oh. where's the torch? Are we passing the torch <laughs> on to the next generation? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> They're gonna snuff our torch out pretty soon. Have you ever seen on. It's a Mad, 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 Mad World? Favorite movie ever. Oh, oh I knew I loved it. Alex. There's a bridge. We are connecting. There's Favorite scene bridge. was the one at the gas station where um, you know he just yes. demolishes the whole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Around the world's apart, cast in eighty paragraphs. Okay, Alex, listen. Andy Baker is a good friend of ours. Yeah. And he writes long blogs, but yeah. yours sounds like it's a good afternoon read. Well, it wasn't really 80 paragraphs, you know. Oh, I didn't okay. bother to do a paragraph count. That was just, you know, a play on words. It's yeah, about well, 55, like though. <laughs> it's pretty close. <laughs> well, this cast I, gave me a lot to write about. It's a solid group. Yeah, yeah we've, it, we've only touched on the top of the of the points that he's made in all of his blog. It's really good yeah. and really detailed. So Thanks. if you need more support in your picks, then go read his blog. It's on our website and on our Facebook group. Go read it because it will give you a lot more intel on these kids. I did see your pick to win it all, and I'm not going to say who it is, but I think it's a pretty good pick. 
Thanks. You, you might change it. I don't know because all of Gordon's stuff isn't out, and I really think this roundtable podcast we're going to have next week is really going to shed some light on stuff because I'm hoping we can, you know, Gordon's talked to all these people, so I'm yeah. really looking forward to hearing what he has to say. But uh, I, I think you have a pretty good final winner pick there. Thanks. So. Does, one thing curious about Gordon, does he was he there on the island when the filming started? Like, did he watch what happened? I bet he was there for at least two or three days. Or like that, like through the first through the first challenge. Yeah, all of his all of his um, interviews are preseason, but I believe he was part of the dream team because I think uh-huh. he won or, like the first challenge, which he's like undefeated in his challenges. Yeah. yeah, first challenge makes sense. That's what it is with Dalton Ross too. He's usually there for just the first you know three or six days, and yeah. then right. yeah, yeah. Hey, I, I gotta tell you, we feel pretty honored to have Gordon on the show. You know. Yeah, I'm looking so. forward to watching it. So with that, I don't want to give away your blog. So if this gives it away, then just say go read the blog. But yeah, do you have a charge for it? So <laughs> do you have a do you have a favorite tribe? Favorite tribe? Um, yeah, that would be the Messiah tribe, the white collar tribe. It's just got a lot of you know really interesting people who I think would be a lot of fun to watch. You know, I I love so I love Sheeran, I love Max. I think that. Um, I think watching uh, Joe Quain crash and burn is going to be fun. I like Carolyn a lot. Um, I think Tyler would be interesting. Yeah, I just really like the White Collar Tribe, and I'm just hoping that they get to stay intact for a while just because it looks like there's a lot of really interesting people in there. I think my least favorite tribe would be the No Collars. They just seem like the least strategically savvy out of the group. All right. Oops. Sorry, my phone just beeped, and I was distracted. Not a problem. It was the No Collar. Complaining. Yeah, it was <laughs> probably was. All right. So, Alex. So, um, how how old are you, Alex? Eighteen. Eighteen years old. You're in your senior year of high school. Yeah. And uh, where do you mind if I ask you where you're planning on going to college? What you're thinking about doing? Um, I'm doing a gap year program before college to sort of get ready for independent living. Um, mm-hmm. and after that, I'm going to apply to some colleges. Yep. Okay. Are you going to go into writing, or are you going to be a Engineer or what? Uh, some majors I'm looking into are nutrition science, fitness science, um, forensic science. Those are all things that have sort of got my interest, so I'm probably yeah. going to major in one of those. David and I are really into nutrition. Uh-huh. No, no, we're not. <laughs> yes, we eat it every day. <laughs> Surrounded by layers of sugar and, and fried bread. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Alex, I decided, and David, I decided I was going to start over because I got back up to 247 and none of my pants fit and I'm fat and I don't like it and I'm unhealthy and I don't feel good. So I decided I'm going to start over, right? So, uh, so I've got this stuff ready to go. As soon as it gets here, it's like a three-day kickoff start. So what do I do today? I go get wings and a monster drink and, and a couple donuts. What kind of idiot am I? Oh, you're not. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Donuts? I mean, that's that's like that's the Dude, worst. I ate a dozen. Do- oh, this is horrible. A dozen donut holes, two chocolate covered donuts, and uh, that 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 was it. Why did you need the monster drink? Because of the donuts. <laughs> oh my God! I had to wash that sugary taste out of your mouth with something else sweet. Yes, another yeah. layer of sugar. Yes. Oh, All right. Is there anything else you want to tell us about yourself, Alex? Um. Um. Do, do you know if any current survivors, or not current, but any past survivors, have, have any of them ever responded to your to your blog? Have Do you know of any of them who've, who've read uh, it? Yeah, um, some of them. Uh, I'm trying to think. Holly Hoffman from Survivor Nicaragua always retweets it, um, which I take as a good sign. Yeah. Um, last season, Natalie Anderson mentioned that she reads it. Um, i trying to think. Uh, I've got some other examples off that I, I don't remember them off the top of my head, but yeah, I, I do have a bunch of regular readers, which is, you know, nice, because, um, you know, the main reason that I started a blog was to, um, sort of, you know, get noticed by casting on CBS, and I figured, you know, if I could, you know, build up my audience as much as possible, that would really increase my chances of getting noticed by casting, you know, show them that I understand the game would make a good contestant, so, right. yeah. Yeah. So it's, so it's good to get, you know, read, <laughs> so it's good to have as many people reading it as possible, because the way I see it, you know, bigger my audience is, the more likely it is that casting will spot me. Yeah, that's what Andy Baker thinks, too. Well, and unlike... Max got and, and Max got cast, not Andy Baker. But, well, still, it could happen. 
Yeah, well, I think that unlike Andy Baker, I won't go out of my way to piss off production. Oh, there you go. Alex lays it down right here on Survivor <laughs> Talk with D&D. So how well, do you think... How, uh, how, how do you think he ticked off production, Alex? Go ahead. Well, those conspiracy theory columns he writes. Oh, some he, like, like, he calls them like the tinfoil buff columns. Where <laughs> yes. I, I think like <laughs> I, he, I think he acknowledged once that those are probably what you know sort of ended his chances of yeah. getting on the show. You know, I, I just think I'll probably not write that sort of thing. Yeah, he he definitely is our conspiracy theory friend. It is yeah. fun to get him. It is fun to keep to uh to have him on the show and to get him going on on conspiracy theories. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's it's always fun to read his conspiracy theory um, columns. You know, they're always really interesting. It's... Yeah. Well, what I like about his as well as yours is that you all you guys always come up with something that I completely missed. There's always something yeah. there, some angle I didn't think about. Even in your blog I read today, I'm like, see. That's changing my mind again yeah. about different people. So that's yeah. what it's supposed to do. And, I, and I'm impressed that, that you were able to write, I'm assuming, again, I haven't read it, but David says it's really good, that you're able to write so much, and we don't even have all of them out yet. We don't even have Gordon Holmes yet. So you'll probably have another one out after that, don't don't you think? Like like the week uh, before, maybe, or something Maybe. Like I might do a second shorter write-up if I feel like the rest of the interviews give me a lot to work with, and yeah. then there's going to be Jeff Probst's cast assessment video and um, the TVGN trailer to always hears. So I might do a second write-up, but if I do, it'll be a lot shorter, but it's not a guaranteed thing. Um, right. Just do a Worlds Apart cast in 81 paragraphs. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, well, well, Alex, uh, any any final words, anything you want to say to our audience, which is now your audience? Well, one interesting, interesting thing that I want to mention, since we brought up the interviews with Gordon Holmes a lot, um, he, Jeff did an interview where he named his favorites from the cast and the players who he thought was going to get targeted early on. He mentioned something about someone that like made me think this person is out of the running. What he said about I think Nina, he said something along the lines of that she was going to be wish she wasn't there anymore and that she was probably going to be an early boot. And hearing him say that Nina's probably going to wish she isn't there makes me think, okay, there's no way she's winning. He would never put down a winner so harshly before the season even began. Yeah, well, we, but, I put but, that on our he, Facebook group today. I'm sorry, I put that on our Facebook group today, so it's there to go read. He mentioned two people that he really did, couldn't see winning, and yeah, he really did. He even last thing he said was, "I think she already wants to go home." Yeah, I just can't picture him putting down a winner so harshly before the season even began. I mean, the fact that he's just you know the first thing he's telling us about her, she's gonna wish she's not there. I think it tells us all we need to know about you know her long term chances. I I didn't think she was you know going to go far in the game before. I thought there was an outside chance she might reach the merge, but after this, I'll be very surprised if she reaches the merge. And it's a pity because, you know, she seems really nice. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got, I mean, has has he ever picked the winner preseason? Well, if you read his preseason um, cast assessment thing, like where he does the video, usually he's neutral to positive about the winner. Because those videos, I think they're always made after he sees what happens. You know, this is his... Oh, game. I thought they were made before. I don't think so. This is always his way to present the players who are going to matter long term to the audience in a positive way up front. You know, to establish the fan favorites. Like he, he's never had an. Uh, he, he almost always. It's, the winners are always shown in a positive or um, neutral light. I mean, they just go back and watch the Jeff Probst cast assess mid videos. You know, he was you know practically gushing over Cochran and um, Denise and Kim and. You, you, sometimes if you just go and watch those Jeff Probst cast some videos, you can take a pretty good guess at some of the long-term players just by, um, you know, who Jeff ca talks about in a positive light and who Jeff talks about in a negative light. You know, another a great example of that is, you know, in Philippines when he said that Angie has no business being out here on Survivor and that she's too young, she doesn't, you know, get the game, and then she was out third. He, he, it's just not Jeff's style to put down the winner before the season even starts. You know, he wants us rooting for the winner. Okay. Well, I, I just remember last season he was all up on a Jeremy's wife. I don't even remember her name now. Val. Jeremy's well, wife. Yeah, but yeah, Val. I'm not saying like some of the pre-merge casualties he'll be positive about, but he's never negative about okay. the winner. He, oh, like, well, that's that's interesting. Yeah, th those videos they're always made after the season. Um, wraps up filming. This is this is his way of introducing the audience to the long-term players early on to get us rooting for them right from the start. Like, you hear him gushing about a player, usually it's a sign that's a long-term player that we should keep our eye on. I'm trying to think, like, um, 
a great example was, you know, in the Philippines, when he talked about Denise in his um, Jeff Rupp's cast assessment video, he talked about how she was, you know, really strong and really social and that, you know, she had what it took. And, you know, if you go back and watch his one Jeff Probst cast assessment thing for One World, you know, he was just gushing over Kim Spradlin. Just he could not get enough positive things to say about her. Like, he just kept talking about how great Kim was, and then she ended up winning. So it's usually yeah. a good way to spot some of the long-term players. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, we are going to say goodbye to Alex. It was wonderful having you on the show tonight, introducing you to our audience. Thanks. It was great to be here. Yeah, your blog post is already up. Uh, yeah. I really like it. He's got pictures in it. He's uh, which is good for me and David. Helps us read it. Um, he's got. <laughs> but anyway, go to our website, SurvivorTalkWithDnd.com, or you can just do stwdd.com, and his is one of the featured posts, so it'll come up. You can also go to the guest blog menu and click it down, or you can do a search. We have a search button, a search box, and you can type in Alex, and it'll come up. But we do want to invite you to go read his post. You need to because he's going to be checking to see how many views he has. I promise you. I can already tell. The guy likes science. So yeah. He's going to be looking. So. Um, have any of the other guest bloggers got their preseason cast um, articles up yet? Uh, we only have one, and Shana has not done that yet. Oh. All right. We used to have um, Katya, but Katya's. Katya about halfway through last season had some stuff come up, and she hasn't written for us. And uh, we had Colton two seasons ago, but you know, after everything that happened, we didn't ask him to write again. He was that, that that was that was oh Colton, yeah, um, yeah. I saw that the other guy, like his blog, her blog that stopped halfway through last season. Right, right, right. All right. So, uh, all right, man. Well, it's been a blast, and uh, I look forward to getting your file link that you're gonna send right. me a little bit. And, Thanks. Uh, it's great being on here. Yeah, we'll talk to you later, man. All right. Later. All right. Bye bye. See ya. Have a good one. You too, man. Thanks. All right, David. That that was fun. I, you know, he's going to be a great addition to our uh, to our website. I think. We um, if you thought he was smart, listening to him just now, go read his blog. Yeah. I'm you, he's an 18 year old survivor genius, man. Yeah. He's really, really in depth and very so smart now, when it comes to analysis. So now you really won't be blogging, will you, David? I don't know what you're talking about. I've never written a blog in my life. <laughs> <laughs> all right, y'all. We have to put up pizza. That's all it was. Yes, we do have a few feedback tonight. So, uh, and we realize it's early. I think we're what still three weeks out from the uh, from the show. So, uh, but you know, we had to put together our schedule, and we really wanted to have our roundtable. Uh, next week and stuff. So, but we've got some good feedback tonight. So we're going to read it to y'all. And let's see. We're going to start with Sindri from Iceland. And it goes like this: <clears throat> Hey D and D, this is Sindri from Iceland. This season looks a lot more promising than San Juan del Sur did. The cast looks great. A lot of larger than life characters. I'm going to tell you my opinions of each individual and rank them only by my biased views of them from the little I know of them. So here I go. Did you just push a button on your end or something? I unmuted. Oh, wow, that's something weird. When it, oh, I bet it's your mute button thing. Make sure those connections are good on your yeah. mute. Is it a foot pedal or do you have it on your desk? It's on the desk. Yeah, just check that. White Collar, Max Dawson. I know this was very predictable, but he kind of has an advantage over the others because I already knew who he was beforehand. Him ranking so highly has nothing to do with his CBS interview because, quite frankly, it wasn't really that good. But he is very funny on social media. He's a fellow super fan and a fellow cat lover, so he's my favorite on this tribe. <clears throat> so, Kim, I really like So. I like that she talked about playing the cute card and making people think she's not a threat at all. I think she has what it takes to win this game. So I think So has so much potential, and So I think she can win. So I think that's it for So, so I'll move on. All right, Sindri Lou. <laughs> yeah, really. Number three, Shireen. Askui. I like Shireen, but I don't know if she can win. She's obviously smart and goofy, but I don't know if she has a good enough social game. I hope she does well, but we'll just have to wait and see. Number four, Tyler Fredrickson. 
I actually really like all four of these top four people. I just read his interview with Gordon Holmes, and he seems to really know what he's talking about. I really can't tell how he will fit in with this group, but I hope he does well. Number five, Joaquin Superbeal, or Super... Mm -hmm. I actually, in a weird kind of way, like Joaquin. Yes, he's very egocentric and confident, but he's a very se but he's very self-aware also. He knows exactly who he is, and that's important on Survivor. But I think that who he is is not a very good Survivor player. He will be a great character for the time he will be on the show, however long that will be. Number six, Carolyn Rivera. I don't know. I really don't. I have no idea if she will be good. I have very little read on her. The only thing I got is she looks like she's trying a bit too hard, but we'll see how she does. You want me to read the blue collar tribe? No, I got it. You got okay. Haldora's, so that'll be all right. Blue collar, number one, Mike Holloway. I like this tribe the least, but it's also the most even. There's very little that separates number one from number six. I really like Mike. He looks like a fun guy who could have a great social game. I kind of hope the Blue Collars win all the pre-merge challenges because they have the fewest big characters and aren't likely to have a lot of drama. But I also hope they lose because there aren't a lot of people on this tribe that I will miss if they were voted out. Boy, Sindri, you have this, this, this battle going on in your <laughs> Yes, in it your does mind. feel like a battle. <laughs> Yes. By the way, David, do you have chat wing open? Because I can't get it open on my um, on my phone. Do you have it open watching for any comments we might need? Yeah. See if you can do that. Thanks. Number two, Rodney. I think there's more to Rodney than meets the eye. He talked to Gordon Holmes about some of the stuff he has gone through in his life, so I think he could have a lot of street smarts. He's definitely a big character, and I hope he lasts. Number three. Wow, he's got Rodney second. I know. Oh, I right. saw that. That was wow. Interesting. Wow. Hey, remember, everybody that's watching live, there's several of you. If you want to post a comment on Twitter, hashtag STWDD. I'm going to make up something here in a minute, David, just so people think we have people watching. <laughs> Number three, Sierra Thomas. Sierra is interesting. I would definitely date her if she lived in Iceland. Oh, wait, that's not on here. I just, that's called I just, read, his, I just read his mind. There that's all. She talked a lot about being able to do a man's job or being able to hang in there with the boys. I really hate when people talk like that. There is nothing that's more a men's job than a women's, and women's goals shouldn't be as good as men. They should just want to be the best they can be as a human being. I know I am making a big deal of something little, but it's just something that really irritated me. Other than that, I actually kind of like her. Oh, well, you might be reading his mind correctly. Number four, Dan Foley. I'm happy that he got the chance to play, but I don't think he will last very long. He's going to try really hard, and he is most likely going to fail. I hope he proves me wrong. <laughs> Dan, that was Sindri from Iceland. <laughs> Not Dwayne or David. Number five, Kelly Remington. I don't have much of an opinion on her. Oh, there's more. <laughs> She's kind of fun, but not much else. Number six, Lindsay Cascade. I cannot say her name. Cascaden? But the no, cat. It's Cascaden. Yeah, Cascaden or something like that. She kind of irritates me. <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought she's number six. <laughs> wow. What has she done, Sindri? Oh, Sindri. What did she come up to Iceland and walk on your yard? In that bathing suit? I mean, what? Yeah. Oh, I was playing uh, Trivia Crack the other day. Which day would you need to get that so I can beat you in it? And uh, maybe it's one thing I can beat you in. And uh, it said, which country or something has the most ice and Iceland was on there and Greenland was on there and two others. I'd say Greenland. It was Greenland. Yeah. And because I have a friend in Iceland <laughs> who said Iceland is a lot, very little ice. <laughs> Thank you, Sindri. All right. Where are we? Oh, she kind of irritates me, just her general way of speaking, but this is just the opinion I got from a one-and-a-half-minute video, so I hope she'll be different on the show. Yeah, I think she will be. Yeah. <clears throat> no color. Jen Brown. I love Jen. She's my favorite player this season. She reminds me a lot of people I know, and she is just my type of person. She's goofy 
funny, and a Survivor fan. I think she could do great. I think she'll have a great social game. She won't be in any kind of a leadership role due to her age, but she will very likely be in a dominant alliance and go far. Number four. I'm sorry, number two. <laughs> Joe. I really like Joe, he says. He's obviously very charming and will have a great social game. He reminds me of Malcolm, which is very promising. I think he will go far. Number three, Vince. Vince is very interesting. I hope he goes far. He's very complex and different, and I hope they'll give him a complex edit and not just a goofball edit. Number four, Will. I don't think Will is cut out for Survivor. I don't know how he will fit in with the other people in his tribe. I don't have much of a read on him as a Survivor player. He just looks like a normal guy. And number five, Haley. I like everyone on this tribe. Haley is very interesting. She is, like most of the others on this tribe, a very complex person. I don't have much of a read on her now, but I look forward to seeing her on the show. And number six, Nina Porsche. She has a great story, but I hope she goes early so the show won't be all about her. She's either going to go early or the other people in the tribe will rally around her. And that, my friends, was Sindri from the evergreen continent of Iceland. Mm -hmm. All right, David. Next we have Haldor. Yes. Haldor. And she starts by saying, hello there, beautiful people of America. Hmm. And all around the world that dig Survivor. Haldor here from Iceland, sending some frosty greetings. I wasn't going to send a feedback, well, we're glad you did, since I didn't have time to look at the individual videos again or read anything about those people. But I thought it would be funny to at least try to get some opinion out. So, Lou Collar, I seriously don't root for any of them. Well, bearded guy and this tattoo could be fun characters, but I have no <laughs> faith in any of them going to the end. This is my least favorite tribe. <laughs> it's our favorite tribe. Her least favorite. I love it. Bearded guy and tattoo woman. Yeah, that's why. That's how you can tell it's her least favorite. She doesn't even know their names. <laughs> she yeah, doesn't really. want to learn their names. White collar. Don't like them much more than Mr. Beard. I'm sorry. Don't like them much more than Mr. Beard. Could go far as he has studied the game well, and he actually looks smart. Not just brain smart, and I think he can work the crowd. The dark-haired woman not in fashion also interests me. <laughs> not, that I, yeah, not that I think she'll go far. Her goofiness just speaks to me. Now, da -da -dum, my favorite tribe. No, 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 no. Dun, dun, dum. Thank you. No collar. Dum, dum, dum. Jen for the win. Picking her as a winner. She's my twin sister. She's a smart goofball, I believe, that has good social skills. Ah, sounds like I'm complimenting myself there. Oh, well, yes, I'm awesome. Uh, Long-haired, smiley dude, I believe, will go far. He's calm, observant, and I think he'll do well in the social game. I'm sure Jen and Smiley Dude will, will team up and will and add one to two to in the mix. Long-haired Feather Guy, a.k.a. Coachish-like, will be a big character in the game, but I think he'll be easily fooled. The tiny blonde brunette, I'm not trying to be nasty, but giving people names, I don't have time to look it up. And it's fun. <laughs> She does not appeal to me. <clears throat> I think she might team up with Feathered Guy. They both look they look both a bit off. Finally, the dark-haired woman. She puzzles me a bit. It doesn't look like she fits in the tribe. But looking at the group, I think it will be four against two there. She'll be in the majority. Okay, this was a bit lame. I remembered two names, and I didn't study those people. But I'm very excited about this season, and I'll send a more pro, deep, and intellectual feedback later on. Cheers, mate. Thank you, Haldora. I like it when Haldora sends in feedback because I get to say Haldora. Really? I yeah. I guess. <laughs> yes, it's true. All right. Here we go. Who is this from, David? Let's go south to Brazil. Oh, we're going to the Brazil. Uh, David, I'll do white collars, you do blue collars, and I'll do no collars. How's that? Deal. All right. This is from Daniel in Brazil. And you might remember Daniel from our World Cup podcast. And Sindri as well. Sorry, I forgot yes. Sindri was on there as well. Our yeah. soccer buds. White collars. I'll keep an eye on Max, Tyler, and Shireen. Carolyn. She honestly seems like a type A personality and the kind of people I'd like to hang out with. 
successful, self-assured, and a natural leader. My only concern is she's at the risk of being labeled as annoying and bossy by her tribe mates for two reasons. She quotes being a New Yorker way too much, which shows her attachment to her original hometown, even though she lives in Tampa, and consequently might be a sign of inability to adapt. And Hillary Clinton as a role model. Nothing against Clinton, but quoting a prominent political person as your role model demonstrates that she might be a little too opinionated and might come off a bit too strong. In this game, she needs to blend in to counterbalance her personality that stands out. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully she won't mention it on the island. <laughs> right. Joaquin. Easy pre-merge boot. The only person under 30. Too cocky and annoying. He's that guy you know from college that has the personality of a brick and an ego the size of Texas. And OMG, if you wear this amount of hair product, we can't be friends. <laughs> All caps. Anyone that wears this amount of hair gel and those clothes at age 27 has no clue of what self-awareness means. This doesn't look good on anyone. Hmm. Daniel, what do you really think? <laughs> Sorry, I'll turn off my phone. It's beeping at me. So, her CBS bio looks like a dating website profile. <laughs> <laughs> she looks, uh, where are we now? Too perfect. She looks too perfect to play this game. I have a hard time trusting perfect people. Not relatable at all. Kind of reminds me of Brenda of Karamoan. Max. Hipsters fascinate me. He's so pretentious and self-absorbed, it's actually funny. But somehow, he's likable to me. I don't think he should mention the survivor class in the game because it might scare people and make him a target. He'll either rule the game or be an early boot. And by the way, hashtag beard goals. Beard goals. Okay. Shireen, she's an internet person with a sassy personality. Love her already. If she fits in with this crowd and makes people get her, quirks and all, she might have a shot because she seems very smart. Tyler. At first, I didn't know if I liked him or not, but he might be one of my favorites. Even though he was a football player, he doesn't look like a physical threat, and he seems likable enough to be around for 39 days. To be fair, Daniel, he was a kicker. And in, in America, if you're a kicker on a football team, more than likely you were a soccer player. Yes. So. That's generally the way it works. Yes. Kickers on American football teams kind of like sit on their own little area of the bench. They don't have to do all the workouts with the rest of the guys. And their kicking cleat does not look like their other cleat. That's right. <laughs> they were two different cleats. Okay. And they still make a lot of money, so good for them. Yes. All right, where am I? In a tribe. In a tribe of so many quote-unquote out there personalities, he's the only one who seems just bland. And this might be his biggest advantage. Because not standing out in the beginning means you're neither a liability to the tribe nor a threat to anyone's personal gain. David, take it away. Blue collars. Blue collars. I'll keep an eye on Kelly and Dan. Dan, dear God, I hope you at least make the merge because if I were you and got booted before the merge, I would be devastated. Like him already. This is a person who truly loves the game and probably studied every single season because this is the 29th season he applies for. I wouldn't underestimate him since his tribes already have two alpha males, which will probably both either unite in strength or crash and burn. He needs to portray himself as a social, non-threatening guy so people will want to keep him around. Lindsay, honestly, all I heard is, I'll flirt. Flirt does not work after 29 seasons of Survivor. We already have one poverty. The woman will make her the first target and the guys won't care enough to save her. If the flirt actually works, she'll be gone right after the merge because couples are a big target. Okay, hold on, hold on. Flirting has worked for the last 2,000 years, and it will continue to work as long as there are men with whom to flirt. And I think there are some men that will be willing to let her flirt with them on this game. Uh, where was I? Kelly. She seems to have it all together. Social, likable, not delusional, and not weak physically. It'll be interesting to see how she plays I couldn't find any major flaws in her pregame profile, and I feel like if someone from this tribe makes the final travel council, 
it'll be her. <laughs> I'm reading ahead. <laughs> Sierra, OMG, someone shut her up. Her all voice caps. is so annoying. Yes, that was in all caps. Her voice is so annoying. She reminds me of a mix between Miranda Sings and Jenny Marbles. Quote, unquote, Jenna, Jenna, Jenna. Jenna, sorry. Jenna Marbles. Quote, unquote, annoying girlfriend. Uh, in parentheses, look them up on YouTube. She's just like Jeffra. Tough girl, beauty queen, blonde, bland. Not a threat. Hmm. Uh, next, both the strong guys. I won't even care for their names. I won't, I, think you meant I won't even care to learn their names because they're irrelevant. The Christie brothers on steroids. Oh, so, man. Self-proclaimed alpha males, annoying voices, early boots, candidates to the title of Jeff Probst's man crush of the season. Wow. So he's putting Mike and Rodney on the same level. Yeah. I'm sure Mike... Well, he's put them in the same market, value market for Survivor. <laughs> yeah. All right, no callers. I'll keep an eye on. Uh, I'll keep an eye out for Haley and Nina. All caps. Vince, stop trying to make this tired beach hipster look happen. It's not going to happen. Coach 2.0. He'll either be the leader of the tribe and make it a cult, or a first group <laughs> because he's so annoying. Haley. Place a law student on a tribe of no callers slash rule breakers is borderline offensive, in my opinion. But she seems smart, likable, and fit enough to thrive in all aspects of this game and make a good alliance post-merge. Jen. She seems pretty cool, but I just have this feeling that the game might be a little too big for her. I'd love to be proven wrong. Nina. She's awesome. I hope she can fit in with all the younger people. Really like her. Will. He'll probably be a fun, likable person that no one wants to get rid of. If he's smart, he'll use this as an advantage, like Kim Spradlin, John Cochran, Natalie Anderson, and other great winners did. Make people gravitate around you and never be seen as a threat. Joe, his bio was so long, and I relate to that, because he probably is a very chatty person. He can't get carried away with this game and with the people. This will be his biggest challenge. And so that, my our, friends, was yes. Daniel. So our feedback from Iceland to Brazil was a bit different. Yeah, there were definitely quite was. a few different opinions. Yeah. And look, if you want to share your thoughts, get on our Facebook group. We've had several people joining. We're up to almost 520 on our Facebook group. It's a fun Facebook group. It's a friendly Facebook group. It's not a spoiler Facebook group. Uh, we're respectful of everybody in the group. And uh, it's a lot of fun. So facebook.com slash groups slash Survivor Talk. We also have a Facebook page, but you'll find out that's not what I'm talking about. In fact, there's a link to the group on the page. All right. All right, so that's our feedback. Not a whole lot, but it was good what we had. Mm -hmm. It is time for the D&D &D Fantasy Game Point System. So remember, you're going to find a buddy or a budette or two buddies and two budettes or a buddy and a budette, and you're going to create yourself a little game. You're going to do fantasy draft just like we do, and uh, you're going to want to pick people based on this point system. All right. Also, there will be a large D&D fantasy game hosted on our Facebook group that is separate from your individual games that you might have with, with one of your friends. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's, you just play, you just pick your top players and you get to go. I I won that one, didn't I, David? Win that one, or come close? Did you win that one? I, think I don't I know, but I lost to you big time. Week. Yeah, that's going to be pretty neat because you just send in your players to Andy uh, Westover. I believe he's going to yeah. host it again. Yeah. And and that's all you do for that game. So make sure you get into that game. It's super fun. It's a lot of trash <laughs> talk during the week, but you just send in your players, and he takes care of everything. That's all right. you ever do for that one. Just and again, one we're, one we're about to talk about, you actually have to keep up with points every week. Yeah. Well, but we give you the points every week. Yeah. Right. We're going to have a Facebook group. I mean, a Facebook post. No. We're going to have a post on our website that gets updated every week with the current week's points and their total points. The players that are gone will be black and whited out, just like on Big Brother. By the way, David, good news. What's that? They canceled Big Brother? No. Oh, sorry. Not that I know of. But remember how we had the, um, the Miko's Challenge last season? Uh-huh. Um, apparently, 
most people really like it, and they like it because they like seeing us get frustrated. So does that include you and I? <laughs> it doesn't matter what we like. It's for the people. For the people. So Miko, he, and I, I, I told Miko, I said, look, we're gonna be, we're gonna be, one show a week unless we do a special edition on Sunday nights, mm -hmm. and that will be all around the guest. So that won't be any time for it. We're gonna have one show a week on Thursday night. We'll have our discussion of the show and listener feedback, and if he wants, we'll do Miko's challenge. And he said because, because so many people liked it and like us get frustrated. He's going to do it again this season, at least for the first four to five weeks to see how it goes. Yeah, I noticed he also threw out Kelly's name because Kelly brought it up last week. Yeah, and yeah, I think the fact that Kelly likes it made him go, oh, da, oh, da, oh, da. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, no, I actually seriously doubt that, actually. Yeah. But, um, but, uh, but I also suggested that he split it up every week, and we each have like five questions a week. Mm-hmm. Like I ask you five, he asks you ask me five. Okay, or it could be less since he's only got twenty four hours. Yeah, he's only got twenty four hours. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the point system of the D and D Survivor Fantasy game. I have the list, and David has the list. So I don't know how we're going to do this. Okay. Your castaway is on the tribe that wins a pre-merge reward challenge. That will be worth three points. And that can be on one of the three tribes, or if they do a shuffle, which they probably will, then they'll become two tribes, but they're still not merged. So within that time period, they'll get points for that. Okay, I have a question for you, David. Mm -hmm. We have three tribes. Only one tribe wins. Mm -hmm. One tribe loses, and one tribe, neither one. Right. So we're saying only the tribe that actually comes in first place. I'm just going by the list. If you, that's in your thing. I know, but I'm asking. We got to Do you want to add one point for those on the second place tribe? Because there will be a second place because there'll be a loser. Well, nah, I say yeah. we don't. Just leave it. I say, look, if you win it, you get three points a person. Okay. All right. Your castaway is on the tribe that wins a tribal immunity challenge. Five points. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, let me ask you this, David. If it's a combination reward immunity challenge, do they get eight points? Yep. All right. Wow. There's only going to be six people getting those points. That's going to be interesting. Yep. <laughs> Your castaway starts an episode, so everybody gets a point day one. Right. I like it. Starts an episode. And that does not mean that they were in the previously on. That means they are still in the game at the beginning of the episode. Yes, since we since there's no redemption that we know of, as soon as your torch is snuffed, you are not in the next episode. All right. Your castaway is the first castaway eliminated from the game. Now, uh, do you mind that I made it 15 points, David, instead of 12? Don't mind at all. The reason why it's worth 15 points because it's almost kind of like a okay I took a risk and I picked this person because I think they might be first out and I'm gonna at least get a point for every episode so you get 15 points plus it's also a, oh we're sorry they're first out here's 15 points that won't matter now did you pick 15 because you think there's 15 episodes there are 16 episodes and they already get points for the first one oh I didn't think there was that many I thought it was like 13 okay oh I thought there were 16 I don't remember your castaway gives a confessional, two points per confessional, and Shayna D, who tallies all these points, will actually determine whether or not it's a confessional. Mm -hmm. Okay, and she goes by Wikipedia or something. No, it's a website she goes by, and what what determines a confessional is how many seconds. If the person starts talking and then the camera goes to the camp and they're still talking, that's still the same confessional. It doesn't break with the camera view. So. Well, either way, she goes to a website that counts confessionals, and that's the count we use. Right. All right? And she'll post it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, your castaway is credited with the title of an episode. That's five points. Your castaway says some of the word, some form of the word blindside. That's one point each time it's said. Mm -hmm. Your castaway leaves the game to a medical evacuation. Seven points. Your castaway is seen cleaning his or her teeth during the episode. 
a maximum of two points for that episode. This should be interesting. We've got a lot of people that don't like dirty teeth in this cast. Yeah. And, you know, and, and we're talking about those, I mean, if, if you see them with a stick in their mouth and they're cleaning it, that's cleaning the teeth. Right. Uh, your cast away quits the game, you get seven points. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not you lose seven right. points. You get seven points. You're not going to get any more points from them, but right. you get seven points. Yeah, no negative points anymore. Your castaway wins an individual reward challenge after the merge. Five points. Mm -hmm. Your castaway is on a post-merge team that wins a reward challenge. Three points. Mm -hmm. Your castaway is chosen to go on reward after an individual reward challenge. Two points. So whether they want it or not, if they go on the reward, they get two points. Right. Your castaway wins an individual immunity challenge. Five points. Right. So that's every individual immunity challenge is worth five points. Right. Your castaway wins the first individual immunity challenge after the merge, a two-point bonus. Right. So that's seven total for the first individual mm -hmm. immunity challenge. Your castaway wins the final immunity challenge, individual immunity challenge, two-point bonus. Your castaway finds a hidden immunity idol. Five points if they find it. Mm -hmm. Your castaway begins an episode with a hidden immunity idol. Three points. Your castaway plays their hidden immunity idol at a tribal council. Seven points. Now, if they give it to somebody, they don't get the seven points. Right. They get, all right, they only get it if they hand it to Jeff and play it. Your castaway plays their hidden immunity idol at tribal council on someone else. That's nine points. Mm -hmm. So if they play the idol, they get seven points. Should that be they play it on themselves, they get seven points? If they play it on someone else, they get nine points? Yeah, because last season Natalie came up and not only – and she played it on Jacqueline, right? Right. Yeah, so I got the fact that she played the idol and – well, the fact that she played it on somebody else was nine points – and it saved Jacqueline. So I got like buku well, right. for that. Right. Well, that's that. Well, what I'm saying is the one before that just says that they play the hidden immunity idol. They get seven points. But that should be they play it on themselves. Yes. Yes. That, that's not right. a combination situation. So You're we right. will change that. Your castaway plays their hidden immunity idol on themselves or someone else, and it saves them from elimination. So if they play it on themselves and it saves them, they get 12 points. Correct. If they play it on someone else and it saves that person, they get 14 points. Correct. Total. Your castaway makes the jury three points. Your castaway makes final tribal council eight points. Your castaway wins survivor 30, 15 points. Mm -hmm. There it you go, my friends. One or two others. So if there's one or two others, we'll mention it and we'll put it in this list once we publish it. But All right. It just seemed like there's one or two other topics that we were going to add. Yeah. I can't remember. Well, we did add the uh, cleaning teeth. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. David, I started watching a show today mm -hmm. that apparently you have been recommending, that and have. I have never seen it. <laughs> it's on Netflix. It's mm -hmm. called The Killing. Yes. It was started out on AMC, and then Netflix oh, picked it up. Wow. Wow. Can I say wow again? It's, it's really good, but it, it made Joel Kinnaman a star. And Who is that? He is the guy that she's partnered up with. Okay. Tall, skinny guy. He he's he gets so much better as an actor through the series. Yeah. And he actually was uh, RoboCop, the remake. RoboCop. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, if you want a good show to watch, uh, go out and watch The Killing on Netflix. I just started it. It's good. All right, guys, thank you for a great show. Thank you for listening again. Be sure to go back and listen to our other two. Tweet about us. Facebook post about us. Let everybody know about Survivor Talk with D&D. We do want to say a special thanks to our monthly patrons. We just got our, uh, our, monthly, our monthly deposit from Patreon, and it really helped pay the bills for our podcast this month. Thank you, and links to Patreon are on our website. Thank you for shopping Amazon. Thank you for following us on Twitter, at Survivor underscore talk, our Facebook group, and thanks again for listening. That's all I've got. How about you, Dave? I'm good. All right. See you, everybody. See you.